Today, we're talking about the D&D movie, more specifically this weird thing about the owl bear in it. So here's the thing. I was there for all the terrible D&D movie moments of the past, uh, where clearly they didn't even bother trying to understand. But here, we have a black dragon using acid breath. Uh, it, there's a lot of classic monsters in there, including the owl bear. And it seems like uh, there's a few people on the internet that are getting caught up with the whole, like, well, druids can't turn into an owl bear, And it's just like, well, everything's going to be a little different with the different mediums of a thing. Even though this is still D&D, this is a movie. So a movie is going to be much different than the tabletop game. The mechanics don't matter, or do they? Because as we started getting more and more into this sort of dumb conversation, like, I started to actually see both sides horribly enough. First off, movie, owlbear good, don't care. A very cool scene, a very cool looking owlbear. It's nice, I like it, I'm gonna see the movie. It looks like they actually put some work into making these classic monsters look cool. That's the big thing. <laughs> but then we got uh, some people... Uh, not doing the homework. And we got responses like this. So, uh, tell me that you've never actually looked at the Polymore spell without telling me you haven't actually looked at the Polymore spell. It, there's all these people that are claiming all this bull crap. It's like, well, Polymorph is on the Druid spell list. You can only use beast forms. Which is like, yeah, there's, there's balance issues built into that, and there's also other issues built in that, so... This shouldn't make me angry. And yet, somehow, I feel like the kid in class where I'm the only one who did the reading. And everyone else on Twitter that's bitching about this, about half the kids didn't do the reading because they're responding with stuff like this. And I know I shouldn't get caught up into it. I know this is like, this is now like, I've completely missed the point myself. But it's just like, hmm. And there was some, there were some people who tried to do mechanic stuff. There was uh, this this great article from ThinkDM, and also there's a series of tweets. That's how I found this in the first place. Why wild shaping into an owl bear won't break your D&D game. The only issue with this is, is that he literally uses the CR system. So what he's talking about is a druid, a druid who is ninth level, uh, shape shifting into an owl bear, which is like. With 5e, once you start hitting 9th level, you can find magical items which allow you to do wonky stuff. You can find, like, it's, it's, it gets pretty wild. So, a druid turning into an owlbear obviously wouldn't be an issue there at all. And, it, like he says, he's literally comparing it to, like, the very few CR uh, 3 beasts that are in the book. So, yeah. Um, obviously, at level 9, it would not be overpowered to have <laughs> an owl bear uh, do all this stuff. So, so what, what do we have going on here? Uh, I think the big thing is, is that a lot of people who are being negative to the response of, well, why wouldn't I let my players turn into an owl bear? Those people might not have run that many D&D games with random people. Because it's an issue. And it's an issue that, like, just trying to run a uh, a raw, vanilla D&D 5e game where anybody, including people who don't really have a lot of experience with D&D 5e, there's a lot of people out there <laughs> that will try to pull some bullshit. And they'll try to use mechanics that don't fit into the game. They'll try to gain a mechanical advantage. They'll try to do anything, literally anything, to make themselves more powerful than the other players. So, that might be why some of the people are saying, well, I don't want to have my players turning into owlbears, or, mm, that doesn't work. People, druids can't turn into owlbears. And I think part of that is because there's been so many cases in the past where they've probably tried to run games where people have been homebrewing their own player character and making them way too powerful. Now, I have the perfect solution for this. Because uh, if you are dealing with a player who just wants to be... Well, I just want to, like, visually... That's part of the character. I just want my character to turn to an owlbear because that would be cool. 
What the DM could do is reskin a, a, uh, a CR appropriate monster, like a brown bear, like a polar bear, depending on the level of the druid, and just say, hey, you can turn into an owl bear, but you can't turn into the owl bear in the uh, monster manual until you hit uh, a higher druid level. Uh, but for now, you can kind of uh, uh, shape shift into a juvenile owl bear and then give them the stats for that juvenile owl bear, which is, of course, just the stats of a brown bear or a dire wolf or, or some other beast that mechanically uh, their druid would be able to turn into anyways. And if they're happy with that, then by gosh, guess what? You don't have a uh, person that is trying to, uh, you know, screw over everybody. In that case, you have a player who's just like, oh, I just want to turn in an owl bear because owl bears are cool, and that's perfectly fine. And again, that's the easiest mechanical thing, and that will also show you if the person's like really upset and saying, well, no, I need to turn into an owl bear. Well, then you might be dealing with somebody who's looking for a mechanical advantage over the other players and trying to be, like, super cool and win D&D by having bigger numbers than everybody else around the table. And, and I don't think that's going to be an issue for just a druid who wants to turn into a, an owlbear. I think they would. I think most of those players would be perfectly happy with you giving them the stats of a, a juvenile owlbear that, that really is a, a creature uh, that is things. Now, of course... This is just the simplest solution. You could also uh, use various D&D monster builders uh, and uh, create a CR-appropriate owlbear for uh, lower-level druids. You could do that. Uh, or, you know, here's the thing. If you trust your players, you can just let them do whatever the hell. And it's not going to cause any issues because the only reason <laughs> you can balance for that owlbear as a DM... The only issue is, is that uh, if you have other players that might get jealous that their uh, that their teammate has an ability that's a little bit overpowered. Uh, so if you want to put the time and effort into it, you could just you know give them all something a little overpowered they can do to make up for that. But again, that's a lot more work for you as a dungeon master. Uh, yeah, so that that's my thoughts on the matter. Owl bear, good. I think it's great they're showing so many cool like monsters and stuff like that, and you know we got the we got the uh, black dragon. We got an animated statue. Looks like we got uh, the uh, mimic, of course. We have the howl bear, uh, and we got the gelatinous cube. That's properly gelatinous cube. I'm looking. I'm looking forward to this. It's you know D and D five e at its core has always had a lot of goofy stuff included. Maybe a little bit more than, like, other versions of D&D. Because there's been goofy stuff in, like, every version of D&D. Um, every single version of D&D has had goofy stuff in there. I mean, look at the land shark <laughs> that Tim Cask came up from. The boule, as he would say. You can't look at that and say that, like, that was 100% serious monster. It's a, it was literally... It, it was a land shark built off... A uh, Chinosaur, which was built off uh, probably some Japanese uh, live-action uh, monster show. You know, I, goofiness is built in there. And I think, honestly, the D&D movie, there's a lot of goofiness in there. I, I like it. I think that's the right uh, idea for the movie. So, yeah. That's what I have to say. Let me know what you think in the comments below.